Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a 2018 Porsche 911 Carrera T. Now the T, in case you were wondering, stands for touring, and it's the more Spartan and driver-focused model of the 911. You can generally tell from the T on the back and that stripe on the side. The first 911T came out in 1968, and it denoted the lightest factory 911 that you could buy, and that still holds true today. The manual transmission version, seven speed, which this is, comes in at 3,221 pounds, and the PDK, also seven speed, is 3,290 pounds. The T is essentially slotted between the base Carrera and the S, so it has a lot of the go fast bits that you would want in a driver's focused car, things like an LSD, which by the way only comes with the seven speed manual, and none of the unnecessary creature comforts. The car comes with the same flat six three liter twin turbocharged engine from the Carrera, the base model, pushing out 370 horsepower. And the Carrera S was 420 at the time. Now, the owner did some work to this car and we're now pushing out about 500 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. That's due to the Litchfield tune combined with the vector equal length headers with a spiral collector. That's gonna help reduce some of that turbo lag. Enough chit chat. Let's see how she drives. Oh, nice. I'm guessing this is for the buffeting. Good call. The interior also far more Spartan and some might say, oh, cloth seats, what is this? But again, we're more purposeful. The, the true driving enthusiast might even say, hey, cloth seats, you got more grip, maybe even save a little bit of weight over leather. I'm not sure the, the weight of cloth versus leather seats. We have the pull tabs as well, not the traditional door handles. Very nice key, I gotta say. I love the yellow accents in here. They got the seat belt, we have the stitching, center marker. Nice place to be. First thing I notice is that this gear shift is very notchy. It's very short throws, very precise, and I got to say I really like it. It's not stock. This is the numeric short shift kit that he has installed and it feels great. Now, the beautiful thing about the T is that you get all the goodies that you want. You get the PASM from the GTS model that lowers the ride by 10 millimeters. The owner also got the DSC 3.1 controller. So essentially an upgrade to both the softer as well as the um, PASM engaged mode, the stiffer setting of these adaptable dampers. Ooh, this road is not happy. Some other ways that they lighten the weight. Now this is only 10 to 20 pounds lighter than a base Carrera. They removed some of the sound insulation. They have uh, thinner glass on the sides and rear. And they also give you larger wheels, 19s in the front, 20s in the rear. Same wheels that are offered on the Carrera S. <laughs> yeah. This is way more than 370 horsepower. lag is not bad. I'm not sure how much the headers with that Vortex collector are helping. It's pretty minimal lag. I am noticing a little bit, but that's because I got out of two naturally aspirated vehicles right before reviewing this one. And the throttle response is not as consistent. See, it's, it's harder for me to get at, as smooth and optimal with my downshifts because depending on where I'm trying to downshift in the rev range, that's gonna change how much throttle input I need to give. That's just a matter of learning the car, which you can get very smooth and precise with it, but it just takes a little bit of time. One of the downsides of turbocharged engines, but one of the upsides is God damn, they're tunable. And when you tune them right, these things haul ass. There we go. Nice heel toe. 
great, great pedal placement and ergonomics, as in most Porsche products. Great steering feel. Again, for an EPS, very nice feedback. One thing you need to keep in mind is that with every generation of 911, Porsche tries to dial out any of the inherent flaws and shortcomings of a rear engine platform. So I'm still able to induce a little bit of throttle-induced understeer. The, the front end gets a little bit light, it starts pushing ever so slightly, but it is way better managed than in the prior generations. It's very noticeable in 996s. It's still noticeable in 997s. This has mostly dialed it out. You only notice it when you're really being ham-fisted on the throttle or really pushing it hard. But that is part of the fun of 911s, is that you need to change your driving style. You need to break a little bit deeper into the corners, get that weight over the front end, and you want to straighten out before a corner exit. Much easier to do on track where you can choose a line. When you're driving on a road, you can't really adjust your line if you're staying in your lanes. Yep, definitely getting the front end light. I really, really like the short shift kit. It is, it's so tight, so notchy, so precise and easy to use. That's what you want in a shifter. And this, this really, I, again, I haven't compared this to OEM, but this feels phenomenal. This is one of my, one of my favorite shifters I've used in a long time. Clutch feels fantastic as always in most Porsche products. The whole ergonomics, they really nailed with the 991 and the 981, the Cayman. When you go in generations prior, 997, pretty good, but could use a little bit of tweaking, not very good for tall people especially in the pedal box. The 996, pretty bad actually in my mind. It's, it's pretty difficult to get comfortable with some of the pedal placement and just the ergonomics of that vehicle if you're built like I am. Six foot one, 170 pounds, mostly in the legs. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of lag, but it's the, the turbo is tuned properly such that it doesn't die off as you approach redline, which is around 7,200 RPM. Owner actually had an aftermarket exhaust, which he, he felt was a little bit too much because this is his daily driver. So he put it back to PSE, which we've now enabled to the stock exhaust setup. And with the turbo, you are gonna lose a little bit of that glorious sound that you get from that natural, naturally aspirated purity. But this still sounds good enough in my mind. We don't have PASM enabled, but the DSC, the 3.1 is still working even without PASM enabled. And I do like what, it's, what, the, what he's done with this. It feels, the suspension is doing a great job absorbing the impacts, not having multiple rebounds. All right. <laughs> you know what's interesting? What they did to this car would objectively make it worse in most people's minds. They've made it lighter, they made it noisier, they've May, you know, giving you cloth seats. It's, to a lot of people, it's a downgrade. But if you're a driving enthusiast, if you want that LC, you want the PASM, you want the things that make a, a Porsche 911 drive better, it actually makes the car more focused. It makes the car a little bit more engaging. But the interesting thing is that to me, it's still a pretty quiet car. It's still a pretty comfortable car that you can use as a daily. It's not like the 911T is some super raw car that's incredibly uncomfortable and that you would never want to daily drive. It's still a 911 at the end of the day. It's still fairly comfortable. It's still fairly refined. And we are in good company today, boys. 
Cayman GTS 4.0 Acura NSX. Life is good. Overall, the 911T truly is the purest option for a 911 without going to the GT3 and the GT models. Previously, the enthusiast would say, oh yeah, the Carrera 2S, to differentiate from the, the 4S, the all-wheel drive, the 2S is the enthusiast model. But now with the T, the T is the enthusiast model. You have that rear engine platform with rear wheel drive, and unlike the GT3, you can rev this out and really enjoy it at its limit without worrying about losing your license, except maybe with this model with the 500 horsepower after the tune, maybe not so much. They also added stiffer sway bars and more rigid mounts for the rear subframe. So you are getting a little bit more of that raw experience with this car, in addition to the lighter, you know, the slightly lighter weight, but more so the reduced sound deadening. Overall, I gotta say, this is a phenomenal vehicle. As always, the full mod list is down in the description. Big shout out to Fenton Sun from the Zygreen YouTube channel for making this review possible. Check out his channel if you haven't already. Much love, my friends. See you in that next one.